So this is section number three, and I'm going to focus on talking to you about the Bayh equation and an optical constant. Specifically, I'm going to more focus on an optical constant k in this uh, in this uh, video. So this is on a Divide equation, and, and I talked to you about how R theta is related to the intensity, scatter intensity of the light. You just have to do the geometry con uh, corrections, scattering volume corrections, incident light corrections. So therefore, you will have a 1 over length scale dependence, and that's what you see here. So uh, to complete this, uh, this uh, divide equation that's shown up here, uh, we need to need to figure out what this k value means. Okay, so this is a number two is a k, and that is known as an optical constant. It's just a number, and it has a quite interesting unit. So I'm going to spend. Quite, uh, dedicate quite some time here. It's actually important for you to have a good understanding because this is also an important part of the understanding the light scattering experiment. So when you do the uh, light scattering experiment, uh, you need to define the K that's an optical constant. And the K is defined in 4 pi square. It has derived from the uh, optics based on the Rayleigh scattering. Okay, so to the power of the 4 dn dc to the square. So uh, let's go things the, this term by one by one, and there are many many terms that are related to here. Uh, N is a refractive index, and refractive index of the solvent. And uh, this is the wavelength of the light, uh, which is uh, in a vacuum. Uh, so that's, uh, that's a number, because the wavelength depends on the medium that this light is traveling to. The most important one is uh, what is called a DNDC value, which is a refractive index change when you change the concentration of polymer solution. So that one is I'm going to spend a little bit more time, but let's just do the one by one here, okay? So N is a refractive index. Of a so medium, which is a solvent. And uh, this uh, value is uh, you typically 1.3 for water, And value is about 1.5 for typical organic solvents. But you have to look up the textbook and to find out what is the value of your refractive index. Refractive index is actually is a function of temperatures and the wavelengths of the light. So sometimes it's not hard, it's not easy to find the exact refractive index value. But if you find something that's similar, uh, you you can. Uh, similar conditions, uh, you can use them. So this is a, we also call, call the refractive index is an RI. So that's a refractive index. And the number two, I guess uh, lambda naught, that's the wavelengths of light, or incident light. Uh, and then I would say we are lucky now because uh, it is a monochromatic. So wavelengths of the light is is uh, defined in our system, and uh, the and the wavelengths of light in the vacuum, and that's a symbol. Not means is the vacuum, and this is a monochromatic light. And the lambda naught is, for example, uh, 500 nanometers for the green lasers. And then that's an that's a important kind of the uh, length scale. You can think about uh, wavelengths of the light is uh, uh, you know, electromagnetic field is kind of oscillating in this, in, in this case with this size scale is about 500 nanometer. Now you start to think about what this really means compared to, I spend a quite a time here. 
before, uh, we talk about the radio cell gyration. I mean, radio cell gyration of 50, with a 10% of that, probably about the size of this. And that's a, you know, RG of 50 is a pretty big size of the polymer. And we are talking about uh, the electric field oscillation here. And from here, uh, we want to measure the size of some sample as a radio cell gyration, for example, 50 nanometer. Is it feasible? The answer is yes. Okay, the, this is feasible. But if you think about, okay, I want to measure the radio cell gyration using the wavelengths of the light is uh, 500 nanometers, and we, uh, the one that I have is, let's say, about 5 nanometers. We are talking about 1% compared to the wavelengths of the light, and that is going to be quite challenging, right? And actually, it is not going to be feasible for the using the light scattering. So you have to use a different wavelength of the light and different method to measure the radio cell gyration. And so that's the different kinds of the challenges. But the principle of the light scattering, light scattering is not a magic bullet that you can measure the radio cell gyration all the time. You can just, you know, this is your physical constraint. Your probing light has a certain size so that you can be measured uh, polymers with a reasonable size, but if size is too small, then you cannot measure that. Okay, so that's a, uh, I guess, a number of uh, different topic that I will also t uh, focus on. What I call scattering Q and uh, the gym equation and radio cell gyration. That's the one that I'm going to talk about later. Mm -hmm. And in this section, that I will just want to focus on on uh, this uh, what is called uh, the optical constant. And this is actually quite an important also one for us to know. So it's a DNDC square, but I want to just call it as a you know DNDC. This is an experiment that you measure changing the refractive index when you're changing the concentration, right? And then this uh, this is a change in polymer concentration, and then you measure the response in change of refractive index of polymer solution. Okay. So what I can do now is I can be graphically show it to you how I can draw. So this is a, let's say, I'm measuring the, this is essentially N refractive index of polymer solution. Okay, so using the refractometer, uh, people can measure that. So, and I can prepare the uh, polymer solution sample. And so this is a C, which is a polymer concentration. Once again, that's a gram per milliliter, okay? And then, uh, typically, by increasing the, uh, the concentration of polymer solutions, uh, polymer has a higher refractive index than the, usually the solvent itself. So therefore, the more polymer that you put it into the solution, the refractive index is going to increase, and then you will you'll get to do the this uh, linear interpretation, right? And this slope here is change of the refractive index when you change the concentration. That's what we call DNDC, okay? So this is the value that people evaluate and you know, in the in the limit of uh, zero concentration, I will anticipate that's a refractive index of the solvent, right? And um, you know, different polymer has a different DNDC values, and so here I I'm giving you another example that where you know, the response can be small, right? So some of some of the sample has a smaller refractive index increment. And then, and then actually, in the worst case, uh, this is actually also you have to consider. Some, sometimes 
you don't see any refractive index changes when you change the polymer concentration. In this case, is essentially N polymer. Polymer refractive index is essentially similar to solvent itself. Right? And in this case, is uh, DN DC value is zero. And the light scattering experiment, which rely on the this difference between the polymer refractive index and solvent refractive index, is not feasible. And the, we have a very famous case that actually where polymers and the solvent has the same refractive index. That, that example is PDMS in THF. Okay, PDMS is a polydimethyl siloxane, and in the PGF, in the light scattering is not possible here. Okay, so this is a, actually kind of the notorious system that you cannot. Essentially, PDMS is invisible in uh, THF. Okay, but you know our other polymer that is pretty common, and this is the one that. Uh, for example, polystyrene in THF. By the way, THF is a tetrahydrofuran. He has a chemical structure looks like this, and he has a refractive index that you guys can find out uh, from anywhere and uh, from the reference books. Uh, the DNDC value, I, I actually look at look it up. This is a pretty decent, 0 0.185. And the value here is a milliliter per gram, right? Because the refractive index has no unit, but concentration is a gram per milliliter, so it's an inverse of the concentration unit. And uh, the, the case of the PMMA is actually the refractive index difference between THF and PMMA is not so much. So this uh, PMMA is a case in THF. This is a when you have, you have a DNDC value is small, which is a 0 0.08 milliliter per gram. It is, so which one is more easier for me to do the light scattering experiment? I guess a PA, PS in THF is easier than the one is a PMMA. But still, I can do the light scattering experiment on PMMA in THF. Uh, because as long as I can use a uh, laser has a strong uh, intensity, I can still uh, generate enough signal to, for me to measure it. It's just uh, now this is an exceptional uh, uh, rare case when your polymer happen to have a same, same uh, refractive index and your light scattering experiment is not feasible, and that is a case of the P uh, PADMS in THF. Just for your reference, I think the, uh, for the last time, I'm going to write this chemical structures, uh, polystyrene. It's like a polystyrene with uh, this benzene group. That's a polystyrene. And the PMMA is methyl methacrylate, and they are measure, measure uh, made by the radical polymerization. This is a methyl methacrylate, so that's why this is a PMMA. And the uh, polydimethyl siloxane is silicon oxygen. This is a siloxane backbone with dimethyl. Okay, this is a what people usually call silicon polymer (PDMS). Okay, this is a silicon polymer uh, that is the one. And so I think that I kind of explained the the main components of the uh, the. The optical constant. The bigger question now is the uh, number. I think the number number four. This is the most important uh, practical in person. Unit of k. How is that unit of k can be understood? And then you can you can think about okay k is a four pi square. N square, Avogadro's numbers, ref, uh, wavelengths of the light to the fourth power, and the dn dc to the square. So that's the one that 
was was I uh, wrote it before. So now I'm writing in terms of the units. Okay, so the pi has no units, so I would just leave it as uh, I always say one. Okay, and what about the refractive index? No units, so I would just leave it as a one. What about the Avogadro's number? Avogadro's number has a meaning of something per mole, right? So that's a per mole. And then this one has a unit of, let's say, length scale, so centimeter to the fourth. And the D and DC has an inverse uh, unit of concentration, so I will just cubic centimeter to the uh, divide by gram and to the square, okay? So now this one has a quite interesting uh, unit, which is now I can say that's a gram square in the bottom, mole centimeter square. That's a unit of the optical constant. This unit uh, is, a, a, I think the, if you look at carefully now, I can kind of divide it, uh, this unit into components of unit that makes sense to you. So mole per gram multiply by gram per, I guess, cubic centimeter multiply by one over centimeter, right? Can, this is the same term. And then now you can see that, wait a minute, this is a gram per mole, that's a essentially inverse molecular weight. That's, a, I guess, a inverse concentration. This is the same as a Rayleigh ratio. So this is a, how the components are being uh, uh, kind of the divided in. And finally, that the optical constant times C divided by R theta should have a, a unit of one over molecular weight, right? So that's uh, one way to look at this. And uh, really ratio, cons optical constant, and uh, <coughs> concentration of polymer solution, and turns out to be used in a form of a uh, divide equation that we can use for the uh, light scattering experiment.